the tripod I use is any bottle that's on hand. I told you this wasn't a professional advice video. It's more of a beginner's guide. Hi everyone, I'm finally doing the how I film and edit video that I promised so long ago. Just a disclaimer, if you're expecting professional advice, this is not the video. I make do with what I have, but I think this is good for beginners because I don't use any expensive material. I eventually want to upgrade my setup, but for right now, it's good enough for me. In this video, I will cover how I get inspiration for my nail art, how I film, what lighting I use, my backgrounds, and how I edit my videos. Here are the timestamps so you can skip to what you want to see. I'll also be answering the questions I got on my Instagram story. Let's begin with how I get inspiration. There's lots of ways I can get inspo, so I'll just list a couple. The first one is the most obvious one, but you can look on Pinterest. I like to look for art that isn't nail art because I always try to come up with new designs that haven't been done on nails. Sometimes I do recreations, but I'm most proud of myself when I come up with something new nail art wise. So I usually just scroll and I let the algorithm recommend me stuff. I'll open the art I find interesting in new tabs so I can get recommendation of those without losing the original post that got me there. I end up with way too many tabs open, but it gets me really inspired. I do this when I have no theme or holiday to inspire me. Sometimes Pinterest can just give me a theme. So for example, here I got the idea for psychedelic mushrooms and then I went on Instagram and I found this. So maybe I'll be doing a nail art with this in the future. Another one would be just good old Google. When I have a specific idea, I'll usually just Google it with the words drawing or art or doodle. I'm looking for simple art that's easy to transfer to nail art. It's not always good, sometimes it's cheesy, I don't know why. So it's hit or miss. For example, when I did my Christmas landscape nails, I looked up Christmas landscape silhouette on Google and that helped me a lot to create my design. Oh, and I love to look at flat art. Here's what it looks like. I love this art style so much and it's often simple, so it's easy to recreate. The desert landscape I did at the beginning of last year was actually a flat art recreation. Next up is Instagram. My recommended page on Instagram is mostly nails, so it's a good place to look for inspiration. Again, I just like letting the algorithm pick posts for me. I like to look at nail art accounts, but I also look at watercolor art a lot. Some of my favorite landscape nail art are recreation of watercolor landscape that I came across. So for example, um, this one and the lighthouse, also my most recent one, were all watercolor painting recreations. On a more general note, if you're just starting out creating nail art designs, don't be too harsh on yourself. It took me a while to get a good understanding of how to create art with nails as canvases. It takes time to learn the rules, if I can say so. What I mean is that at the beginning, I didn't know how to build a composition that would make sense on a nail. And the first designs I created were kind of awkward, but that's what helped me grow. I don't know if it makes sense to any of you, but nails are a very particular canvas to paint on. You can play with the cuticle line and the smile line of the nails. You can also play with the shape of your nails to create designs. You can even include the undersides. All of these parameters you have to learn to be able to create. A comparison I like to make to illustrate the idea that you have to get to know your canvas before being able to master creating art on it is makeup artists and eyeshadow looks. They can play with cut crease and eyeliner, bottom eyeshadow and eyelashes color. They have so many parameters too. I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks about art this way, but to me it took a while to familiarize myself with nails as a canvas. When I've got my idea in my head, sometimes it's still too abstract, so I draw it on a picture of my nails. I don't do this often, but from time to time, when I'm unsure about a design, instead of spending hours painting it and not knowing if I will like it, I prefer to get a preview. So I personally use the Photoshop app on iPad, but you do need an Adobe subscription to access it, so you can use any app that you have. 
Maybe you have Procreate, that would be great. If not, I sometimes use Notability. You could even use the annotation feature when you edit photos. It just helps me get a general idea of what the nail art would look like. It also allows me to test out different ideas that I normally wouldn't try out because it's more difficult to erase something on a nail than on my iPad. And to get the creative process going, it actually helps a lot to draw stuff. If you only try to think about ideas in your head, you probably won't be as creative. I've had classes on the creative process and that's one of the most important thing. One thing will make you think of another and you'll end up with an idea you might have never thought of if you hadn't gotten it on paper, or in this case, iPad. Let's move on to how I film my nails now that I know what I'm painting. I have two places where I do nail art. I know this is not common, but my mom is an artist, so her studio is in my basement. The reason I use acrylic paint for nail art is because that's the medium I learned to use growing up. So I paint with nail polish at my work desk, because that's where I have all my nail polish stuff. And for the part where I use acrylic paint, I work in my mother's studio. Okay, now that I've established my very unique working setup, I'll talk about actual camera and lighting stuff. The super professional camera I use is my phone. Yeah, uh, I just use my phone. <laughs> For lighting, I usually just put on the flash, but when I'm at my work desk, I have a desk lamp, which improves the quality a little bit, but I'm too lazy to carry my lamp with me every time I want to paint in the studio. So when I'm in the studio, I just use the flash. I wish I had better lighting that was softer, but since I have to move around all the time, it would be annoying to carry everything and you already know I'm too lazy to move around one lamp, so imagine a whole setup. The tripod I use is any bottle that's on hand. I told you this wasn't a professional advice video, it's more of a beginner's guide. So yeah, when I'm at my desk I use a nail polish bottle and when I'm in the studio I use an acrylic paint bottle. It's the best way I've found to be close to the nail and still have space to move around. I also like to have my nail so you can see the design in the right direction, so I make sure the orientation of the video is right by turning it the opposite way. Then I turn on my flash, I place my nail under the camera and I zoom in a little bit. And that's pretty much all I do to film. I have a black cardboard as my background and I move it around when it gets too dirty. I use black because the shadows are less visible this way. Now onto the editing part. For my YouTube videos, I use Premiere Pro since I had a class on how to use it. But again, you do need an Adobe subscription and I understand not everyone can afford it. Since most of you don't have an Adobe subscription, I won't go into detail for the Premiere process, but I will fully explain how I edit my Instagram videos because I use iMovie and it's a free app. So you can use the same method in Splice, for example. I usually write down the voiceover first. I write it down because it helps me gather all my thoughts and since English is not my first language, it's easier that way. Then I record it on my phone with the voice memo app. I usually record it three times, so if I mess up, I have multiple versions of the same sentences. After that, I put it in Premiere and I edit out all of the blanks and mess ups of the voiceover. Then I match the video to my voiceover, and that's really the general process of how I edit. For my Instagram tutorials that are one minute maximum, I edit on my iPad and iMovie. It's a super simple app and it's easy to use. I just select all my clips and put them into one project. Then I speed up all the clips to the maximum, which is two times on iMovie. I center my nail on each clip. That's how I have my nail always at the same place. I just fix it in the editing process. Then I cut out all of the unnecessary parts and I add a photo at the end for the thumbnail. I export that and put it into a new project to be able to add my watermark on the whole video. I add it with the text tool. I 
I also speed up the video a little more if it's over a minute and I add my music. You could also use Splice to edit your videos, it has some more features than iMovie like being able to choose a ratio or speed up to more than just two times. The last part of this video is answering some of your questions, so here we go. How do you keep your fingernails in the same spot during shots during time? I try to center it as best as I can under my camera, but it's never perfect so I always just fix it in editing. Any tips on how to paint your nails while filming? I find it hard when the camera is in the way. This may sound obvious, but put the camera on the opposite side of the hand that you're painting with. I paint with my right hand, so my camera is always on the left side. If I were to put the camera on the right side, it would just be in the way like you said, so I just put it on the other side. It's way easier and you can get super close to the nail. Also, sometimes it's hard to paint upside down, so I make tiny guides and then I film. Like here for the spaceship, I made four tiny dots and that helped me paint the spaceship. Sometimes I paint the general shape and then I correct it off camera too. Where do you find copyright free music? I just type it into YouTube, copyright free music or free rights music and I listen to what comes up. How does the camera when you're filming stay in focus? I check it every now and then to make sure the shot is in focus. Sometimes it's not, so my videos are blurry in parts, but checking often is the best way to keep in focus. I also check it at the beginning of every shot, and I lock the focus from time to time if needed. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer them. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave me a like and subscribe to my channel. You can also click the bell to turn on notification and be sure to never miss a future video. Thank you so much for watching and supporting me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!